We're glad you're with us today. This is the Retirement Education Hour. Hi, everyone. Megan Mozak back in the studio with financial instructors Kirk Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler. Kirk and Paul, they are with the Retirement Education Foundation, and we're so glad to have you along on the program today. Great show lined up for you. We're going to talk about what a true retirement plan should have. And if you don't have these things probably time for a second opinion, probably a red flag for you. So we're going to break that down with Kirk and Paul today. We're also going to be telling you about the foundation's courses. These are like master's level retirement planning courses. They're hosted by the foundation. They're sponsored by the foundation. We're going to tell you how to register, how to get a front row seat as these these, uh, events definitely fill up quickly. And they're so important if you're thinking about retirement or even if you're newly retired. You've got to have have a lot of education here in a modern retirement. And that's what we set out to do each and every week here on the program. And speaking of this program, I want to make sure you're aware you can listen to this show and many others in our library wherever you find your podcast. That's right. You can simply search for Retirement Education Hour. So Kirk and Paul, we're back and we're talking today about what a true retirement plan is needs. And you say there are a few things that are important, but so many people don't have this approach. What are we talking about today? So Megan, we're talking about what we call a four bucket asset allocation approach. So I I know people have probably been hearing this bucketing concept for a while. They've been reading in the articles and the newspapers and their uh, magazines and in many published books, people are using bucketing because based upon behavior, we know the the average investor tends to compartmentalize their money. So we're going to talk about the four buckets we think are critical to an effective retirement plan so that when we have different types of market conditions, we can pivot and change where we're taking our income from, Paul. Yeah. I mean, I think whether we call it four buckets or we call it something else, I think the the, the important part of this show is for people to understand all the different levers that you need to pull in order to be successful. And I, th- I think the takeaway people are going to see is, is that it really is fairly comprehensive. To do this right, there are a lot of things you have to think about. We reduce it to four buckets, but within those buckets, there's a lot of different levers that people have to consider. And I think people ultimately will see that to do this right, you ha- it's pretty comprehensive. And all these things are important. Paul, if people consistently listen to us, they'll actually learn, okay, we have this basic four-bucket asset allocation approach, but we also then talk about the buckets literally within the buckets, which are, I know we're getting a little confusing, but it's the reason why the courses that we're teaching are are eight hours in length, and they're taught at, at many universities and colleges around the country. So, look, this is... It's not easy, and you cannot accept at this point in your lives a cookie-cutter, one-size-fits-all solution or an e-money or a money guide pro or a a right capital software solution the right type of planning will take you it will take you i mean a a professional with cpa cfps attorneys it'll take them 50 60 hours to build what we try to teach people to be able to build in our eight-hour classes so I want to be careful because there are buzzwords in the financial service industry to make suggestions on what someone's trying to sell you. We're, you want to know what we're selling you is education. That's what our charity does, right? And so when we're telling you these things, I know people really struggle. This is what's given me the success I've had to this point. Yes, but everything changes. Now it's about income and how do I maximize my income, make sure I don't outlive my money, right? And so everything needs to be driven off. What do I need to give me what I want? Not what's gotten me here. That it's irrelevant what's gotten me here. Now I'm in a new place because now I got to pay myself. So attend one of these eight hour courses. They're at held at most of the major universities in your area. If you'd like to register, go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. You know, Kirk, one of the things I love about this show is that in some ways, this is a mini class, right? What we're going to try to do today is highlight some of the key pieces that we cover in the class. But I want to warn the listeners that listening to this show does not replace coming to the class, right? We're going to tease you. We're going to give you little pieces of what we cover in the class and what we do in our private practice when we do planning and what should be 
in a comprehensive plan, but this does not, you know, listening to the show does not replace what you're going to learn in class. Because, right, Kirk, in the class, we dig much deeper into these four buckets than we can do today. And that's why we teach these eight-hour, almost master's-level courses at most of the major universities in your areas, right? And so these courses are taught over two evenings or one full Saturday. It's a 200-page textbook, and all you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity to attend. If you'd like to register, you can go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. Or you can stream this virtually while we're teaching it live in the class. So you can do it in the comfort of your own home. You know, the, I, one of, I, I hope two things that people take away from today's show is, one is that they need to attend this eight-hour course. Um, the second is that what they currently have I, I'm promising you it's not enough. Here, look, we know that the average baby boomer who's going to retire with $200,000 saved, some of the technology and software that the industry uses is just fine. You can use your Money Guide Pros and your e-monies. You can use those probability of success, and you can use the 4% withdrawal rate. But those of you with the $1 to $10 million dollars, you have more resources that allows you to have a more aggressive type of spend down of your money. And as a result, you can withdraw rates higher than 4%, like five, like six, seven, eight percent withdrawal rates in your early 60s, as long as you're doing it with this comprehensive planning in mind, knowing which accounts to pivot to during different market events. See, what we're gonna teach you is that it doesn't what's not what's going to drive success isn't what you invest in but it's actually where you're taking your income from it's more income timing than investment timing very different so again these classes are 8 hours in length taught over two evenings or one full Saturday. We're teaching at the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, Novi and Troy campuses, Oakland University, Columbia College, a, a couple other universities and colleges around the Columbia area in Missouri. We are really excited that we're teaching these courses to the public. These, all you have to do to make to attend one of these courses is make a $29 donation to charity. If you'd like to register, go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. And we'll return plenty more Retirement Education Hours straight ahead. It's great to be alongside financial instructors Kurt Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler, both with the Retirement Education Foundation. We've been telling you about the foundation's courses on retirement planning. These are really master's level courses. They're designed to go deep into these planning concepts. And these are things you need to know to have a successful modern retirement. So we want you there. We want you to reserve your seat. You can do that easily at the website, retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. The phone number to register is 800 240 8981. Again, that's 800 240 8981. These courses are held at major universities wherever you're listening today. So if you're in the state of Michigan, keep in mind that you can attend at the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, both the Novi and Troy campuses, or Oakland University. And go to the website if you're listening to us in the state of Missouri. We have a lot of major college and university locations for you as well. Again, that website, Retirement Planning EDU. Dot org. And don't forget, you can listen, re-listen to this show and many, many others in our vast library of shows. Wherever you find your podcast, you can simply search for Retirement Education Hour. All right, Kirk and Paul, we're talking about the very best approach when it comes to retirement planning. You say there is an approach that you always utilize for success. Four buckets. What are these four? So the four buckets are bucket number one, liquidity. Um, this is where we're going to have our emergency. Okay. So every, first of all, every retirement plan should have the, all these four buckets in them. Now within these buckets, you're going to have different accounts and different buckets within the bucket. So let's start with the, the basic bucket. One is liquidity. This is your checking and savings. These are your emergency accounts. 
we're going to talk about a little bit more about how much, why you should have that amount in that account as we go along here further. Bucket two is lifetime income. This is contractually guaranteed income you can never outlive, like pensions, like Social Security. We can debate whether Social Security is guaranteed later, but today we're going to count it as guaranteed. Uh, some ins- some insured products may be appropriate in this account depending on the individual person's circumstances. Bucket three, this is the bucket all of you already have and you're most familiar with. Bucket three is long-term growth. These are going to be your stocks, your individual bonds, and your exchange-traded funds, your ETFs. And you notice I did not say mutual funds. Come to the course, eight-hour course, and you will never, ever, ever own an actively managed mutual fund again. I promise I'll make a $2,000 guarantee. We'll make a $2,000 donation to whatever charity you want if after our eight-hour course you still want to own actively managed mutual funds. You will not. Promise. And then bucket four, totally ignored by the financial service industry, this is legacy. This legacy bucket first is, legacy is first your surviving spouse, then your children or loved ones or charities. Now, this is where we see a lot of mistakes because the legacy planning, your beneficiaries, how things are set up in your trust should be done differently if you're not the average baby boomer. And that's the mistake we see. Most people do this incorrectly and 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 everyone gets treated the same way, like you're going to retire with $200,000 saved. Many of you have a lot more. Many of you have a, a million to $10 million saved. We're going to talk about the different things in legacy that need to be addressed for those people with one to $10 million in retirement. So, Paul, do me a favor. I've been rambling. Can you jump into bucket one and explain liquidity, emergency funds, bucket one for us? For sure. I, yeah. No, I, this, this is a bucket that I think doesn't get enough attention, right? I think is often overlooked because, you know, people don't realize the importance of having an emergency bucket. So this is money that you have in cash, that if you have an emergency, you, you own a house and you need a new roof or, or let's say you need a new furnace or, you're, you're, you know, you, have, you need windows or something, something urgent that you need money today or tomorrow, this is a place that you can go to. Why is it important? Because the last thing you want to do, if you don't have this, and all of a sudden you need $20,000 for an emergency, is to liquidate money in the stock market if the market's down, right? That's the worst thing you can do. So it's important that you have some cash. Now, you don't need $100,000, $200,000. I mean, we need people that have half a million dollars in cash because they think they need that for emergency. You don't need that much. But you need to have enough that if you have an emergency and you need money today, you can go to without having to liquidate an investment at the wrong time. Paul, people make a mistake with this bucket. They downplay it. They don't think it's important. And we're going to spend a few minutes on it because it's that important. Look, when you were younger, the rule was to have six to 12 months of emergency funds available. And the reason you had six to 12 months of emergency funds is if something were to happen, you couldn't gain access to your retirement funds, your retirement accounts, unless you paid a penalty. But once we retire, we have full access to all of our money. Everything's liquid. So we see a lot of people have less savings in retirement. Now, uh, you can have too much. You can have too little. Now, here's the reasons why. Our rule of thumb is you should have thirty to $50,000 in checking and savings I don't care what it's earning, thirty to 50000 nothing less and nothing more. Hear us. I know there's many people with $5 million and they want their three, dollars $400,000 in checking savings. You don't need it. We need thirty to fifty. Now, the reason we need at least thirty or fifty is because we don't know when we're going to have that unexpected expense that we didn't budget for. We know when you're going to have it because we have the data teaching tens of thousands of people around the country. We know you're going to have an unexpected expense you didn't budget for every 3.2 years in retirement. So every 3.2 years, you're going to have something you didn't budget for that you're going to need to go to your emergency fund from. And the worst thing you could do is to pull money out of the market when your market investments, when the market's down. In fact, you can't do that. If you do that, you run the chances of something called sequence of returns risk, which is the number one risk to your retirement. So we have to have some emergency funds. Now, having too much 
over $50,000. Like Paul said, we have p- meet people all the time in our classes, two, three, four, five, six, seven hundred thousand dollars $700,000 in cash is insane because it's sitting in cash for 30 years of retirement. And those dollars generate so much of your income in retirement that you are just hurting your own retirement income, having too much in emergency savings. It's irrational. Tell me what you, that costs more than $50,000 that you don't have insurance for. There's nothing. So that's irrational. Now look, just attend one of these eight-hour classes. We will teach you how to build a 30-year retirement plan so you can retire earlier, spend more, and have less fear, anxiety, and pay less taxes. To attend one of these eight-hour courses, you can register at retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. And we'll return with Kirk and Paul right after this. This is the Retirement Education Hour. Glad you're with us here on the program today. We're talking about an important approach that you need to have in your retirement plan. And Paul and Kirk, they're breaking this down for us today. Of course, Kirk Cassidy, Dr. Paul Mettler, they're both with the Retirement Education Foundation. They are financial instructors there. You can meet them and some of the other instructors when you make plans to attend the foundation's deep dives into retirement planning. These are really, you can think of them as master's level courses on retirement planning. And I want to tell you where these courses are held. If you're listening in the state of Missouri, These are held at Columbia College and Stevens College. You can go to the website to get registered. That's retirementplanningedu.org. If you're in the state of Michigan, these are taught at the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, both campuses, Novi and Troy, or Oakland University. And no matter where you are, Remember, you have the option to attend these courses virtually. They are streamed live, each and every one of them. So get registered today. Here's that website again. It's retirementplanningedu.org or call to register at 800-240-8981. And this show and the others in our library, they are available to you at any time. You can download them wherever you find your favorite podcast. All you have to do is search for Retirement Education Hour. And back to our topic at hand, which is so important, and that is the approach you need in your retirement plan. And we're talking about the four bucket strategy. Uh, We talked about bucket one. What's bucket two, Kirk and Paul? So, bucket two is lifetime income. Now, so I need people to hear me for a minute because, again, we are financial instructors for a national charity called the Retirement Education Foundation. And our whole purpose of the charity, well, they they have a number of different functions and purposes and support different causes, but it's around financial literacy. And today's show is specifically around advanced retirement planning strategies. So the courses we're teaching in universities are for those people within 10 years of retirement through retirement. And this is really for that person that has, you know, $700,000 saved up to 20 million. It's not the basics. This is really advanced strategy. So when I talk to you about bucket two, I need you to hear me as I'm a financial instructor, not as someone trying to sell you something. Bucket two is really, really critical. Bucket two is critical because we call this lifetime income, contractually guaranteed income sources. What you're going to learn in this course is your focus has to shift from serving money to letting money serve you. So the name of the game, which you all don't understand yet, And the financial service industry doesn't teach you is that it's no longer about focusing on just growth, but it's really focusing on how much income I can create every year to live on. How can I maximize my income? How can I take out withdrawal rates of six, seven, eight, nine percent withdrawal rates starting at 60 ish years old, which is anyone listening today knows it's double. The calculator, the financial service industry is going to tell you, you can only take three to 4% withdrawal rates. Every software used today, every 401k calculator, Schwab, Fidelity, you name the companies, they're all using a calculator that produces a three to 4% withdrawal rates. And then they're going to give you a probability of success somewhere between 80 and 85%. If you do it properly and you attend this course, you're going to learn bucket two lifetime income that is contractually guaranteed from sources such as pensions, 
Social Securities, or you have to create your own pension. Now, this is where it gets sticky and tricky because most people who try to create their own pensions by buying some sort of insured product, well, they do it wrong. 96% of people buying annuities waste their money. You've wasted your money. That's why this class is so critical because we're going to teach you if you're going to need to buy your own pension, use your own type of annuities or insurance products, <laughs> we're going to teach you the math and show you how to build a plan before you buy a product. Once you build the plan, then you can identify the right product to fit your plan so that you can actually win instead of the insurance companies win. But do not discount this. You can't, here's what you got to accept. You've got to accept in retirement that you're going to have some accounts that are going to perform a little less than what you're used to so that you can generate stable income when the market is volatile. And then you're going to have some accounts that you are used to where you can focus on growth, individual stocks, bonds, and ETFs. And when the market is up, we can pull money from the accounts that are up. But when the markets are down, I've got to go to some of these insured accounts to, and this is what allows us to take that six, seven, eight percent withdrawal rates, Paul. This is the whole most important bucket in the plan, but it's not easy to figure out how much, which types, at what years. There's a lot of variables that go into that, Paul. Yeah, you know, I, I think this bucket is important for two reasons. Obviously, the financial importance, but in addition, there's a, it really helps from a psychological perspective. And I think what people don't appreciate is retirement planning is as much about your psychology as it about dollars and cents. Because at the end of the day, when the market is down 30%, having bucket two income will allow you to spend without worry and allow you to still enjoy retirement. And if you ignore this bucket... Your life in retirement will mimic the stock market. When the market's up, you're going to spend. When the market's down, you won't. And that's not what retirement's all about, right? Retirement is about enjoying it regardless of what's happening around you. And bucket two is key from a psychological perspective to allow you to spend throughout retirement without worry. And I think that's really important, Kirk. Paul's my brother. Any, any regular listeners, I know different last names and we don't look like, but Paul is really my brother. And, and my brother has his backgrounds in psychology. I mean, for years, it's, and he specialized working in the elderly and geriatric. And so Paul put his finger on it. You hear me talking about the math, right? I'm telling you the math. You got a man sequence returns risk. You can't pull money out of your stock market investments when the market's down. You got to pivot to these insured safe buckets when the market's down. And Paul put his finger on it. All this math is great, but it's really the psych psychology behind You're never going to feel more vulnerable. You're never going to be more anxious in your relationship with money is going to change. You're going to be scared. You may have been a disciplined investor in 2008. You may have been a disciplined investor during COVID, but I'm promising you once you retire and all you have to live on, all you got is your own paycheck. You have to send, create your own paycheck. No one else is paying you. Your behavior is going to change. And we know that because we saw 60% of baby boomers or 60% of people over the age of 65 panic in 2008. We saw 35% of baby boomers panic during COVID. So do yourself a favor. Attend one of our eight-hour courses. They're taught at most of the major universities around Michigan and Missouri. If you'd like to register, all you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity. Go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. Back with Kirk and Paul right after this. It's always a pleasure to be alongside financial instructors Kurt Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler. They're with the Retirement Education Foundation, and you can meet them and other financial instructors when you get registered for the foundation's courses. These are held at major colleges and universities right there in your community, and they're designed to go deep, several layers deep, almost like master's level courses in retirement planning, helping you understand what some of the biggest risks are to your retirement income, how to generate income, and how to be savvy in this world that's ever-changing when it comes to the economy and it comes to government and world events. We want you to have a great retirement. It starts with education. So get registered today. If you're listening today from the state of Michigan, these courses are held at the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, both campuses, Troy and Novi, 
or Oakland University. In the state of Missouri, you can attend at Columbia College or Stevens College. Go online, reserve your spot today at retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. Keep in mind, no matter where you're listening, you can attend these courses virtually. All of them are streamed live. That's an option as well. Call to register 800 240 8981. Back here, Kirk and Paul talking about this approach, this four bucket approach that they say every single retirement plan, if you want to be successful, you need this approach. We're talking about buckets, four of them. What's bucket three? So bucket three is the bucket that most people have the majority, if not all of their wealth and money in right now. This is your stocks, your bonds, your ETFs. Again, you notice I didn't say mutual funds. And I'll say this, make this promise again. One of the things the charity's willing to make a guarantee promise that after the course, if you don't if you two two promises, if you still think you want to own actively managed mutual funds, we'll make a two thousand dollar donation to whatever charity you want. That's how convinced we will we are that we will change your minds after spending eight hours with us. The second is we'll make the same amount of a donation to charity if after attending one of our eight hour courses, you don't leave that course being able to spend more money in retirement, paying less taxes in retirement, and have less fear and anxiety. This course is a game changer. Now, back to bucket three, stocks, individual bonds, and ETFs, and not mutual funds. And I'm going to start with why not mutual funds? Well, the average cost to own an actively managed mutual fund is a lot greater than what you think. The net expense ratio is not all of the costs. There's been tons of research done on this. Depending on who you want to believe, you are paying somewhere between one and a half and two and a half percent to own an actively managed mutual fund. And come to the class, we'll show you the data. Okay, two, (laughs) not only are you paying so many fees, the performance really is bad. The performance on an actively managed mutual fund over the last 30 years, they're performing at about 3.98%. The S&P 500 is performing at about 11%. So you're way underperforming the index. Three, 40% of all mutual funds fail with and go out of business within 10 years. They close the fund within 10 years, 40% of them. The last reason, there has never been one mutual fund manager ever, 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 one. There's never been one mutual fund manager that has been able to stay in the top quartile or the top 25% for five consecutive years. It's never happened. So, Bucket three, individual stocks, individual bonds, and ETFs. Now, if you have done a good job and you have all four buckets in your plan, specifically bucket two, the contractually guaranteed lifetime income that you can never outlive, then when we have very volatile markets, we are going to be more likely to be a disciplined investor and not panic like most retirees do every time we have a short-term market event, Paul. That's a big problem. You always talk about the behavior and the psychology around this. This is a big, big issue, not panicking and pulling money out of these accounts when the markets are down. Yeah, you know, Kirk, it's interesting. I think often people look at these buckets without understanding how they sort of interplay. And I think bucket two and bucket three, you know, work together in combination. People focus often when they invest money in the markets, they focus on the stocks and bonds they pick. At the end of the day, if you have bucket two, if you have contractually guaranteed income, you will actually do better in bucket three, right? Your, your investments will perform better over your lifetime if you have bucket two, if you have contractually guaranteed income. The reason being is, is that if you have income that you can turn to, that you can pivot to when the market's down and you're not forced to sell your investments when the market's down, over your lifetime, your investments will do very well. So one of the things I think people get confused out when they think of bucket three is they really just focus on picking the right stocks, picking the right bonds. At the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. As long as you're fairly well diversified, you can limit your fees. The key to bucket three is bucket two. Bucket two allows bucket three to grow during times when the market's bad. That makes sense? you, you, You nailed it. I mean, that was great because look, 
So what, what you stocks you pick, what mutual funds you buy, what bonds you pick, all that stuff will not drive performance, your success in retirement. It won't. It's not going to be the average rate of return that drives your performance. I'll show you in the class how you can have an average rate of return of 10% in the stock market for 20 consecutive years and only take out 5% a year to live on, and you'll run out of money in 17 years. Because if you lose early, you're dead. You cannot pull money out of the stock market when the market is down. You can't. You have to have accounts that you can pivot to during that time frame. And so you guys are stock picking, market timing. Stop. You don't need to do that. You can just own the index. It's really not that hard. We are responsible for over $2 billion in our private practice. Over $2 billion. We manage a ton of money in the stock market. And I could tell you, we are not stock picking and market timing. We're indexing. We are buying individual bonds. We do use some ETFs, but it's really about income timing, not stock market timing that's going to drive your success. It's pulling income out of the right accounts, the right buckets during times of volatility and not pulling money out of the wrong count, uh, wrong accounts when the market is volatile. So there's a reason, Paul listeners, there's a reason why this class is eight hours. The charity, we have our CPA, the attorney, CFPs. Look, it's eight hours of advanced, almost master's level education on how to construct an appropriate retirement plan so you can pull out six, seven, eight, nine percent withdrawal rates in your early 60s. Pay a lot, hundreds of thousands of dollars of less taxes if you know how to do it. So attend one of these eight-hour courses Register at retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. Or call 800-240-8981. And we'll be right back. Plenty more on the Retirement Education Hour. This is the Retirement Education Hour. Megan Mozak here with financial instructors Kurt Cassidy, Dr. Paul Mettler, both with the Retirement Education Foundation. And I gave you the website earlier. I hope you visited. This is how you can secure your spot at the foundation's courses that are designed to help you really understand what's at stake for a modern retirement, how to plan accordingly. These are like master's level courses. And so they are one or two day deep dives into all things retirement planning. And we want you to get registered today. If you're listening today from the state of Michigan, these courses are held at the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, Novi or Troy Campus, Oakland University, and then in the state of Missouri. You can attend at Columbia College or Stevens College. And no matter where you're listening today, keep in mind that these courses are streamed live. That means you can watch and learn from the comfort of your own home. You can attend virtually. That is an option. And you can learn much more about locations, dates, times at the website retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. If you'd rather call to register, that works as well. Here's that phone number. It's 800 240 8981. Again, 800 240 8981. We're going to get back to our program and our topic at hand. But before we do, I want to remind you you can re listen to this show. You can listen to many others in our library. Simply find it wherever you find your favorite podcast. You can download it there. Search for Retirement Education Hour. All right. Kirk and Paul, we've been talking about this four-bucket strategy that you say belongs in everyone's retirement plan. We've covered three of the buckets. What's bucket four? So bucket four is is legacy. And honestly, Paul, this is one of my favorite topics in the class because people, disc first of all, the financial service industry has totally ignored bucket four because they haven't figured out a way to make money selling something about bucket four. So they tend to ignore it. But bucket four is is so critical, at least the most of the people attending our courses, because most of the people attending our courses are not the average baby boomer. Because remember, the average baby boomer has $200,000 saved for retirement. 40% of baby boomers only have Social Security. So those of you with that $700, a million, $3 million, $5, $10 million, legacy becomes much more important because this is where, first, we are going to protect the most important 
person, which is your spouse if you're married, because legacy begins with the surviving spouse. Then it goes to your loved ones and or your charities. In this this uh, bucket, Paul, this legacy bucket is where we're going to help people avoid mistakes on how to designate beneficiaries, right? Think about the average baby boomer, Paul, only uh, uh, passing with less than $200,000 saved, a lot less because that's what they're retiring with, right? So as a result, we're not talking a lot of money. So those of you with a million, three, five million, when you pass away, imagine, imagine for a minute that you've made your spouse the primary beneficiaries and then the contingent beneficiaries, your children, well, is your children going to be divorced or going through a divorce when you die? Well, there's a 50% chance that your children will get divorced. That means naming your children the, pri- uh, the contingent beneficiaries of your trust and then you dying and them inheriting it exposes those dollars to your potential ex-daughter-in-law or son-in-law. It's basic. I know it sounds basic, but most of you listening are making this mistake. Then proper language in the estate planning documents, the trust documents, so that the surviving spouse can pay little to no income taxes when the first one dies becomes important. There's something called disclaiming strategies need to be put in place. So that's something we teach in the class because, Paul, we know when the first spouse dies, the surviving spouse goes from married filing joint to a single taxpayer but still has to take the RMDs for both them and their decedents' retirement accounts. So they go from married filing joint to single, so their their income goes down a little bit because we lose one of the Social Securities, but taxes go way up. And so does Medicare because Medicare is also means-tested, which cuts in half once one of you dies. Paul? There's so much to talk about in this to- this segment. What do you want to talk about? <laughs> well, you know, I, it's, I, it's interesting, brother. I never heard you say this, but, you know, you, you said this is like one of your favorite buckets to, to, to talk about, to teach about. It is for me, too, but I, th- I don't know if it's the same reason or not. But one of the things I love about bucket four is is the whole charitable strategy side. Be- and the reason being is, is it serves two purposes. I love the idea that people donate money to charity to help charities, right? That, that's really, if you're lucky and fortunate, you've done well, and being charitable is important, there are some really unique strategies to be charitable that help charities now or in the future. But I also love it because it's an opportunity for us to do some tax planning. And I think that is something that people don't think enough about in ret- when they do retirement plans. And again, if you're charitable, Given the fact that most people aren't itemizing anymore, there's some great charitable strategies that allow us to do some Roth conversions and some, you know, moving of assets to allow people to really reduce their tax liability in the future. And I I love that because, again, it's not something that people often talk about or hear about. No, Paul, that one to ten million dollar family is totally alone in this aspect. Many of them do support their religious organizations and their charities. And over 95% of baby boomers will not itemize once they retire. So you're not getting any tax benefits for the $10,000, $15,000, $20,000 a year you might be giving to charity. We're teaching in the, in the classes where that $1 to $10 million family can start getting full deductibility of anything they're giving to the religious organizations and their charities by talking about some, uh, QCDs or what they're called qualified charitable distributions or donor advised funds or charitable trusts. There are so many ways, in fact, we teach people in the class how they can save more money in taxes than they ultimately gave to charity and helps them reduce their required minimum distributions because it allows them to Roth convert. It helps them resolve some of their capital gains issues that gives them more confidence and freedom to spend money that they were worried about spending because they they were going to have to pay taxes on. Well, you don't. There's, I mean, The tax portion of our class is probably two hours of the eight hours. It is remarkable the amount of tax savings if you know how to manage your tax brackets and how to take the right assets from the right accounts at the right ages to minimize taxes and minimize sequence of returns risk. It's amazing. So it's, it's, it's not an accident. These are eight hour, almost master's level courses that we're teaching at most of the universities in Michigan, most of the universities and colleges around Missouri. And we're streaming live while we're teaching from the university so you can watch it from home if you can't be there or if you're in another state. 
All you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity to attend. Register at retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. And we'll be back with Kirk and Paul after this. This is the Retirement Education Hour. We're glad you've tuned in today. Kirk Cassidy, Dr. Paul Mettler, both financial instructors with the Retirement Education Foundation. I'm Megan Mozak, and we've been talking today about a very important aspect that belongs in your retirement plan, and that's the four-bucket approach to asset allocation. And Kirk and Paul have been breaking that down for us today. We're going to dive back in, but I want to remind you to get registered. Register for the Foundation's upcoming courses. These are courses that go deep into retirement planning, helping you feel confident about this next stage of life. And you can attend. We make it easy to do that. Several locations for you in the state of Michigan. You can attend at the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, Novi or Troy campuses, Oakland University as well in the state of Missouri. You can attend at Columbia College or Stevens College, And no matter where you're listening, keep in mind that these courses are streamed live. So you're welcome to watch and learn from the comfort of your own home. The website to get registered is retirementplanningedu.org. The phone number 800-240-8981. And this show and many others are in our library, wherever you find your favorite podcast. Simply search for Retirement Education Hour. Kirk and Paul, we've been talking about this four-bucket approach. Really, this comes down to one thing, and that is planning, right? Well, it does come down to planning. And and so today we spoke about the four-bucket approach that every retirement plan has to have. These four buckets have to be in the plan. But we didn't talk about how to construct the plan, right? And so it's much more nuanced than just having these four buckets because within those four buckets, then you're going to have some sub buckets or, or buckets within buckets as we often describe so that you can pull the appropriate levers during different market conditions to manage sequence of returns risk to manage taxes. And it's what allows us to be able to teach you how to build a plan to have withdrawal rates of six, seven, eight, nine percent withdrawal rates starting in your early 60s. Okay. It also is what helps us knowing these levers how to minimize taxes. And many of the attendees, and we've taught tens of thousands of people, many are saving hundreds, not tens of thousands, but hundreds of thousands of dollars in taxes. In fact, I would encourage you to go to the website and watch. What a sample plan, we have a webinar, the sample plan webinar, what it looks like. And in that plan, (laughs) we've got people living on $160,000 a year, increasing for inflation throughout their entire life, saving almost $600,000 in taxes. That plan is exactly what we teach in the class. And it's not only how to set up all your accounts and where to invest the dollars, but more importantly is when do I take income from which one, which of my accounts at what age to minimize all the sequence of returns issues, minimize taxes, and allow me to have more income, retire earlier, and pay less taxes, Paul? You know, I think, Kirk, I think it may, what I'm going to say may be so self-evident, but, you know, we talked about four buckets and people may think, well, they can go out and they could have a checking and savings account and maybe they buy themselves an annuity and maybe no. they invest in the stock market and be the life insurance. And, and, and that's their plan, right? We're simplifying this because we have to do it in a radio show, eight minute segments, right? But this, it's so nuanced. Everybody's different. For some people, you know, legacy may be pretty small. They don't have children. Maybe they're single. Maybe they've never been married, right? For some people, they may want to spend way more than they should. So bucket two is really important, right? So every person is different. Every plan is unique. So just because we're telling you it's four buckets, it may seem really simple. At the end of the day, really building a plan is really complex. Knowing when to pull levers, what levers to pull, very different. The class does justice because the class takes these four buckets and we dig really deeply in each one of these and we spend hours in each one of these buckets and we get into really how do you build a plan based on this. So just because you're listening to the show, this is a great show to listen to. It's a great way to sort of get you interested, but at the end of the day, nothing replaces getting educated about how to build a retirement plan. Paul, you know what really annoys me? 
is when I what? hear people saying retirement made simple. Oh, it's really easy. Yes, no, yes, it's, yes. It, it's not easy. It, okay, let me rephrase. Well, if that's you because we live average... in a society where everything has to somehow be simple. <laughs> it, it, this is not simple. Look, it's fine if you're the average baby boomer retiring with $200,000 or less. Then it can be simple. And yes, there are little softwares, eMoney, Money Guy Pro, the uh, 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 right capital software, all those things that produce in 30 minutes produces this probability of success plan. That's fine. But if you've got that million to $10 million, your retirement plan to be able to take out six, seven, eight, nine percent save hundreds of thousands of dollars in taxes and eliminate the fear of outliving your money. So you have the freedom to spend is not simple. It's not simple. They want you to think it's simple. Look at the back of your brain. You have to always remember when you're talking to anybody in the financial service industry, anybody in the back of your brain, remember this, the less money you spend in retirement, the more money the person helping you manage your money, the more money the financial service industry makes. When you spend less, they make more because they get paid based upon the amount of money they're managing for you. So sure, it's simple. They tell you to spend less during times of market volatility and protect your principal. <laughs> well, of course, that's simple. If you're going to protect your principal, yeah, it's not that tough. Great. Go ahead and do that and let them make more money and you live on less. That's why we teach these classes, and that's why it's eight hours, and that's why tens of thousands of people around the country have attended and continue to attend these courses, and that's why the charity formed these courses. So all you have to do to attend one of these eight-hour courses, by the way, the courses are taught in two evenings or one full Saturday, and we can stream them. So wherever you are in the country listening to us, you can stream while we're teaching from the universities, University of Michigan or Oakland or Michigan State or Columbia College, wherever you're at, you can stream and listen. Just make a $29 donation to charity. If you'd like to register, go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. Retirement Education Foundation is a fiscally sponsored program of United Charitable, a registered 501c3 public charity. Investing involves risk, including the potential loss of principal. Any insurance discussed in this show is backed by the financial strength and claims paying abilities of the issuing carrier. This radio show is intended for informational purposes only. It is not intended to be used as the sole basis for financial decisions, nor should it be construed as advice designed to meet the particular needs of an individual's situation. Retirement Education Foundation is not permitted to offer, and no statement made during this show shall constitute tax or legal advice. Our firm is not affiliated with or endorsed by the U.S. government or any governmental agency. The information and opinions contained herein provided by third parties have been obtained from sources believed to be reliable, but accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed by Retirement Education Foundation. This radio show is paid for by the Retirement Education Foundation.